Hello people, I am Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new video. So in today's video, we are going to learn 8085 programming. If you know, we have already done one video of programming of 8085 where we have done simple programs of add two numbers and basic block transfer programs. This is the second part of that video, part two, where we are doing some complex programs. Complex as in no program is complex according to me, but from a student's point of view, yeah, a higher level of programming. So now, what are the questions? The first one. Write a program to find the highest in a series of numbers. Now this is a typical exam question and is also a program that is used so often in the real world. Tell me if you use Microsoft Excel, I am sure you know what is Excel, then you know what I am talking about. Suppose these are all your marks, okay? <laughs> Suppose. So these are all your marks and uh, you want to know which is the highest. So you store it in the form of a table, you select that whole column, you select all the cells of that column. Now when you do this mass selection, on the top left there are various options which are pre-programmed uh, and kept ready like the sum or the average or the max. Yep, the max is what we are talking about. When you hit the button max, right below the series comes the highest of that series. Now that is exactly what we are doing. Now when you hit max, obviously it doesn't come by magic. There is a program written behind it. That program is the program that we are writing for 8085. So how big is the series? You got to assume that yourself. Where is the series stored? Again, you got to assume that yourself. Now, these are the things which they don't give in the exam question. Sometimes they do if they are generous. I mean, most of the times they don't give because they are same material. If the series is of 20 elements or of 50 elements, the procedure is the same. So, you assume the length of the series and you assume a location where the series is stored. So, let's say there is a series of 10 numbers stored from location 2000. We are going to find out which of these is the highest. We are going to store the result immediately after the series. Now, these were 10 numbers stored from 2000 to 2009. I hope you understand that. So, the location after 2009 will be 2010, correct? <laughs> 2000A, wake up, we are working in hexadecimal system. Yeah, yeah, most students in the class make the same mistake. Anyway, that's why I've not written the number. So, we are going to find out which is the highest and store the result over here. That's what is the first question. The next question is, add a series of numbers. Again, again in that same Microsoft Excel. You, these are all your marks, let's say. And you want to know what is your grand total. So when you select that, amongst all those predefined functions, there is a function called sum. When you hit that, right below it, the sum of this whole series comes. So whatever is the total of this will be stored over here. Now you know this, when you add two numbers, you get a sum and a carry. When you add a series of numbers, that carry will no longer be a 0 or a 1. It will be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, depending upon how many numbers you are adding. To make it simple, suppose the two numbers you are adding, two 8-bit numbers that you are adding, worst case scenario are FF plus FF. Now, FF plus FF is 1 FE. 1 FE means sum is FE and carry is 1. So, when you added two numbers, the carry max could be 1. Now, if you are adding three numbers, FF plus FF plus FF, that will give you 2 FD, like 99 plus 99 plus 99 gives you 297, same thing, 2 FD. Anyway, it is that, you know, when you work so much with hexadecimal numbers, you suddenly find yourself being more comfortable with hexadecimal than your decimal. Anyway, anyway, that's my story, not for you. So, uh, 2 FD. Now, in 2 FD, your sum is FD, your carry is 2. So now your carry is a whole number by itself. It's no longer a 0 or a 1. It's a proper 8-bit number. It could be 3, it could be 4, it could be 5, it could be very much. It could be as big as you want. So let's say there's a series again of 10 numbers. Now, how big is the series is your choice. Uh, where is the series stored is your choice. You can assume what you want to. Again, I'm taking this to maintain similarity. It could be any number. So instead of just bogging your mind with unnecessary details, assume there's a series of 10 numbers stored from 2000 onwards, 2000 to 2009. A and B will have the whole result, A will have the sum part of the result, B will have the carry part. That carry part will not be a 0 or a 1, it will be a proper number, it will be like the higher byte of your result. If you just want to do this whole addition, treat them as decimal numbers, come on show me how fast you are. Suppose they are decimal numbers, 80 plus 60, 140 plus 90, 230 plus this is 100, 330. So in 330, 0330 is your answer. 30 is the lower byte that will come here, 03 is the higher byte, that's the accumulated carry that will come here. Okay, So that's going to be your second program. The third program is to add two 16-bit 
BCD numbers. Now, when I say add to 16 bit numbers, that's very easy. Add the lower bytes, then add the higher bytes with carry. So, the carry of the lower byte comes into the higher byte. That's just adding to normal 16 bit numbers. These are 16 bit BCD numbers. BCD means decimal numbers. Decimal numbers entered in the system as if they are hexadecimal. You know that, right? You know which instruction is going to be used over here. DAA. Remember? So, you're going to be doing that. Now, the point of DAA is DAA works only on 8 bit numbers but the catch in the question is they are 16 bit numbers so you're going to add them in parts first you'll add the lower bytes you'll get an answer you do da it'll give you the correct answer then you'll add the higher bytes with carry you'll get an answer to which again you will do da will give you the final answer as 11229 of course you're going to do all of it i'm just telling you what these questions are and the last one another very popular question write a program to determine the number of ones in a number they'll give you any number they tell you isme how many zeros or how many ones are there it's very simple it's probably the simplest program what you're going to do is assume the number is stored somewhere let's say 2000 we'll store the result at 2001 so take the data from 2000 keep rotating the number as you rotate the number each bit comes into the carry flag every time you rotate the number check the value of the carry flag if carry flag is one that means there was a one in this bit if carry flag is zero that means there was a zero keep a counter which will be initially zero each time you get a carry increment that counter so once you finish rotating the whole number eight times that counter which was always incremented only whenever there was a carry will eventually tell you how many ones were there in the number so that's the logic of these four programs so these are four programs that we're going to do there is no limit to the number of programs a person can do i could in the class i do some 30 40 programs uh, i could make about 10 videos of programming each video having three four programs by itself and still would not get over the idea is i always tell students also you don't learn programs you learn programming you learn the skill of writing programs once you write 8 10 12 13 15 programs you get a hang of it you get control over this language thereafter all that happens that you need to do is build the logic and none of them are rocket science all of them have a fairly simple logic why people say programming is tough so many people say in microprocessors programming is the toughest thing because they try to do everything together first they hardly learn the instruction set they try to jump into programs that's the first mistake secondly they don't understand how to create logic by the time they figure out how to create logic they don't understand how to write instructions that's what you have to avoid. The first thing you have to do is learn all the instructions. I've taught all the instructions on my website. There, there are some five, five videos, five full videos of one hour each, teaching the whole instruction set, giving real world examples of every instruction. Once you finish that, once you know every instruction, you start with basic programs. That's a video that we had done before, so that you get a hang of this language. You understand where to use LDA, where to use LXI, where to use LDAX. Now, you're not going to get it by just four programs, but you start getting there. Then you start doing more and more programs. There are two clear things in programming. One is control over the language. Second is building logic. Once you develop decent control over the language, then you can start building logic and the logic over here will never be tough. So eventually, uh, as you do more and more programs, it gets easier and easier. And after a point in time, you will agree with what I'm saying. Programming is the easiest thing on the subject. That's why that big smile on the face when you're doing this video, because I know in my mind it's so light as compared to doing a theory topic. Programming is very simple. Okay. Now, with the, without further ado, let's start. Now, before we start, I have told you what we are doing. This is an introduction. Okay. If you want to watch the whole video, you want to learn the whole subject from me, please come to my website www.bharataacharyaeducation.com the link will be given down below on the website register yourself as a user there are several processors which you could learn they are all divided into separate channels this program of course will be there in the 8085 channel now in that channel there are already some 32 33 videos covering all the theory topics all the interfacing all the instructions timing diagrams etc and programs so there is one video already of programs where all the basic programs are done now this is going to be another programming video and we keep adding more and more programs there is a cost to the subscription of course this is not for free because this is not my hobby this is my profession for us to do this day in day out it has there has to be something for it for the, us in it otherwise it will not be possible for us to do this anyway but i've kept the cost ridiculously low it is much lower than what i charge in the classroom uh, so the cost is 9.99 as of now it is due for an increase in the near future but as of now it's 9.99 so once you make that payment or you, you make the payment how you make like how you make it in any other website there's a proper payment gateway uh, 
ATM, net banking, credit card, debit card, everything works. Once you make the payment, instantly the website opens up for you. Then you can start watching all the videos. Along with the video, you, with every video, you get a PDF. That PDF is a theory answer that you're learning, the theory form of the answer. So that from the video, you understand the concept and then from the PDF, you can prepare the answer for the exam. Okay. Hope to see you there. Enjoy learning. All the best. Do well.